Hello, this is Prophet Six, family prophet to the angel of the church of the lay of the sins. God bless you and happy Sabbath. Today is April the 13th, 2013. And today I just want to talk to you, just give out some encouragement for those that are born again and for those that are not. Okay, I'm not biased in this regard. Of what I'm about to speak on but I just want to let you know <clears throat> you know I always have my intro where I say prophet six the family prophet but I noticed that a lot of my videos don't specifically deal with family issues and so I wanted to take this time to do just that I want to deal with a family issue there are a lot of people out there that are single there are a lot of people, and when I say single, single without children, single with kids, divorced, married. And I just like to, some people are celebrating their 10th, 20th, 30th year anniversary. This goes across the board, the, the, the word that God has given me. So let me start by saying, thus saith the Lord. God's kingdom is not getting built. It really isn't. And we don't have to look at, you know, a lot of algorithms concerning Christianity and its failures in the homes, in the home. Those things are important. But let's just look at some basic things, you know. Look at how Christians, the majority of Christians get married. The criteria for many Christians who claim to be born again, by the way, their criteria is no different from the world. Well, we want them to have a nice job. We want them to be smart. We want them to be well-educated. You can talk to a, a, a born-again Christian in any denomination on earth. And guess what's going to come up? Predominantly those things. You know why? Because the Christianity that most of us practice is that which is manufactured by the world. It's not really Christianity at all. And I don't care what denomination. It don't matter. They all the same. They all the crabs in the same bucket. But in each one of these denominations, there are people that are really seeking after God and are born again. And you know they're born again because they are seeking first and only the glory and success and galvanization of God's kingdom. How do you know that you're born again? Because that's all you're interested about. You, you jealously guard your interest in those things. And I noticed that when young people get married, they're not looking for a mate to build up the kingdom of God with. That's not even on the list. That's not even on the list. When God gave Adam, Adam, Eve, when he presented Eve to her, to him, he said, this is your help me. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. That's what Adam said. This is his help me. Help me to what? Everybody always talk about help me, help me. But help me to what? Help what to, to meet what need? The need and desire to build up God's kingdom. If you got me, if you got me a hundred Christian young people or old people who are about to get married or middle age and ask them why are they getting married the kingdom wouldn't even be on the list that's how you know they're not born again and that's why our the, the divorce rate among professed Christians mirrors that of those that are in the world and in some studies they, in statistics and polls they say it's higher we're not building up God's kingdom. 
I want to tell you, one of the main reasons why Christians get married is so they can build up the kingdoms of the world. To make Merrill Lynch richer, Bank of America richer, DCF S run more efficiently. Government agencies, police, firemen. We we the reason the main reason why Christians get married has nothing to do with building up God's kingdom. That's why it's in shambles, like it was in the days of Zechariah. When they were about, about to be released from captivity and they were you know, Zachariah said, you know, look at me. He started weeping because he was looking at the place that he was living in as the king's cupbearer. And as he examined it and he was and then his mind went back to Jerusalem, the place that they were taken captive from. And he started to, to get depressed. He said, look, I'm living like I'm living in a lap of luxury and God's house is in shambles. And when I say God's house, I'm not only talking about the temple. I'm talking about God's people. The place, the people, and the relationship with God. That's what God defines as his church. And I noticed that when Christians get married at any age, it don't matter what age. They are no wiser than the teenagers are. And another thing that I noticed, that Christians will marry a heathen as quick as a heathen will marry a heathen. They don't care about God's kingdom. You could tell in, their, in the way and the criteria they have in finding a mate. The reason why, so, and I'm going to deal with single people too. It's not just about getting married. It's about how you are maintaining your single status. The reason why a lot of Christians, Christian women are still single because they are not born again. They have no desire to build up God's kingdom and even find it a mate. They don't. You know why? You know how I know? Because if you look at the way that a lot of these single men and women live as singles, you can tell they're not concerned. Fornication. They'll sleep with a, a, a married man just as quick as if they wasn't a Christian. It don't matter. And people are horrified in churches when I go and say that Christianity is a gutter religion. Look at our homes, y'all. Look at our marriages and our relationships with our children. This is the basis on which I say that Christianity has become a gutter religion. And I know some of you pure people out there are going to say, well, they're not real Christians. Tell them that. The, I mean, Christianity has become such a gutter religion, even the devil will argue with you that he's a Christian. And he would have much good ground. Looking at the state of Christians today. So if you want to get married, you got to be born again. You have to experience the new life in Christ. How do I know that? Go back to Genesis chapter one. When Adam and Eve were created, they were in Christ and they were having experiencing a new life. They weren't born, they weren't, they wasn't, it wasn't a new life in the context of being born again, but they were, it was a new life nonetheless. They were the first human beings on the planet. And God put two people who had a new life in Christ, He put them together and made them compatible with each other. God didn't find a, a, a heathen to match Adam with or to match Eve with. He found a suitable mate in Eve, in Adam, in Adam, and for Adam in Eve. 
Christians make a whole big, they make a whole lot of hoopla about a homosexual marriage. But they undermine it and give the, the institution a black eye when they go out and marry a heathen. And they also do this when they are not even born again. They are Christians in only name only. And no reason, no wonder so many Christians are raising up devils in their homes. I'm talking about their children. No wonder their children run out and marry heathen. They're not born again either. And they got good training right at home. Good home training on how to be fake. And in many instances, most they say 80% of children that are born in Christian homes don't even, they never come back to the faith after they enter college. 80%? That's our turnover rate, people. So if you want to mate, be born again first. Because when you're born again, you can see the things of the kingdom. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 3. He said, if, he said, if you're not born again, you can't even perceive the things of the kingdom. And when he said things of the kingdom, it included citizens of the kingdom. You can't even find a born again mate because you're not even born again. All you're going to do is go marry a devil that calls himself a Christian like you are. I know this is hard language. Y'all not used to it. I know it's not. But listen to what I'm saying. Listen to the spirit. Listen to the love. I know it's rough. But God's kingdom is not getting built in people's homes. It's not getting built in their marriages. It's not. Our homes are in shambles. Our marriages are in shambles. And many of our marriages that even stay together, it's only because of convenience. Economic convenience and security convenience. It's not because of the kingdom. Love of the kingdom? No. Seek ye first the kingdom. You know what? It's interesting to me. Nowhere in the book of Genesis does it say that Adam loved Eve. Well, hold on a minute. Don't run away. Don't run off on a tangent. Let, hear me out. Hear me out. Don't come to any conclusion and think it's right because you came to a conclusion. Listen. Listen. When, when God brought Adam to Eve, nothing was said about love. God told Adam what his obligation was. God told Eve what her obligation was to Adam. And God told Adam before Eve was made what his obligation was to the kingdom. The first thing that Adam fell in love with was not Eve. It was the kingdom. It was God. That's the first thing he fell in love with and became passionate about and emotional about. We do it totally opposite. And we try to do it in the name of Jesus. We say we're doing it in the name of Jesus. We fall in love with somebody and have all these thoughts and God is nowhere on the list. So hear me out, people. Hear the cry from my heart. No matter what denomination you can find, you can't see them building up, even Jehovah Witnesses. I'm not saying that they are Christians. They know more Christians than the rest of these churches. <laughs> they know more Christians than the rest of these denominations, whether they keep the Sabbath or not. These are not Christian organizations. These, these things that we call churches and denominations. What we're, what we're calling denomination and churches today, you know what they basically are? They arms of the government, harlots of the government, of the state. That's all they are. They're harlots of the state in Jesus' name. And well did Isaiah speak of them when he said, seven women shall take hold of one man and said, let us eat our own bread and wear our own clothes, our own righteousness, but let's just be called by your name. Well, did Isaiah say of Christianity today? 
And I prophesy that right Harlots. All of them. Heathen, pagan, Muslims, Christian, they, they all they all like sisters. That's all they are. Because as soon as these religions get over here in America, even if they Muslim, they do the same thing that Christians do. They become converts to capitalism and converts to democracy. You see that? I want to tell you, I want to tell you what galvanized the love of Adam with Eve. What galvanized the, what galvanized the love of Adam to Eve is the fact that this was his helper to build up God's kingdom and subdue the earth with kingdom citizens. That fomented the love of Adam for Eve and Eve for Adam. Christians today, all you have to do is have a nice job or an education or some 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 rank by name or some power or influence behind your name. And and that's all you need. And that's why some of you all are never going to get married. You're never going to get married. You're going to be fornicating all the way up to the, the time that you can't fornicate no more or nobody want to fornicate with you. I'm seeing this everywhere. Everywhere. This is Prophet Six, family prophet to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. <laughs> God bless you. Snap.